Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. I have had on my mind lately, what stories are scrap worthy? Lots of times I think we do like the big events and the big trips and things like that. But I was looking through some of my summer photos and found all these like cute little memories. I didn't have a lot of photos. I didn't have, you know, like a whole event around it, but just some cute stories from this summer. And I thought, hey, why don't I tell some of these stories? So I had some of this memory lane collection from Close to My Heart. This is a special that's been going on throughout the summer, and it's coming to the end here. And I still have some of the stickers, some of the paper, and it's actually really good, versatile patterns that you could scrapbook all different kinds of things with. I also have my favorite sprigs and leaves die, Sadly, that one is retired, but I'm still going to be using the heck out of that one. So I'm actually going to be making three different single page 12 by 12 layouts. I don't do this that super often, but when you have little stories where you don't have a ton of photos, uh, I think it's a really nice thing to just do a single page layout. Now my goal with these pages is to use up some of the paper and also to keep the designs pretty simple so that I can pop these together pretty quickly. I love that rainbow ombre pattern and I thought having some smaller strips like this, I could work in a few of the different patterns and then I also want to repeat those on the other side. So I have a single photo of my daughter here. You can see her cheeks are all puffed out. I'll tell you the story about that in a second. But I want to mirror kind of the patterns that are on the left over on the right. I am using white daisy cardstock for the base on all three of my pages because one, white is just my go-to. I love having a blank canvas that I can ink or stamp on. And I'm gonna do some ink blending here. I just have the peach ink and I'm going to start off where I know the paper is gonna be covering it. So that kind of be my darkest point, but I just wanna have the ink nice and softly diffused. If you use like an ink blending tool with the foam, I find that you get a lot of lines working with the Close to My Heart inks because they're just regular dye-based ink. But using some sort of ink blending brush with all the bristles really helps diffuse out that ink. And I know it's gonna match my color palette perfectly because peach is one of the colors in this pack of paper. So Close to My Heart always lists all their colors that are in that paper pack on the little zip strips or the branding strips. So you can see exactly what colors are coming in that pack and then you can pull your inks and you know that they're going to match, which just takes the guesswork out of it, makes things so much faster. And anything that can make my process faster and easier, I'm totally for that. So I'll tell you the story while I'm doing some ink blending here about what's going on in this photo. So we had been at the park and we were on our way home and I looked down and her cheeks were all puffed out and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> she was holding her breath because of the skunk. There was no skunk. It did not smell like skunk, but she saw an episode of Clifford, the TV show, and there was Whiffy the skunk ghost in that episode and then we watched another show and it was like a wildlife show and they talked about skunks and that just like created some sort of obsession with skunks <laughs> so now when we come home from the park or at the park she'll pretend that she sees a skunk or we're following the skunk it's just a really cute story and you know something that's just going on right now that I might not have thought to document but when I was looking through my summer pictures, I was like, you know what? That's something that's been a recurring story throughout the summer. So I want to get it down on at least a single page scrapbook page. Now you can see here, I'm adding all of these little sticker banners. These are from the sticker sheet. And I thought this would just be a fun way to connect those two sides of the page and fill in the center with something that's a little bit more decorative. I could have put another photo instead of having these banners on here, but I didn't really have another photo that went with this story. I have photos from being at the park, but that doesn't really tell this story. Now I want to bring in some flowers. This is the Sending You a Hug set. Look at all those thin cuts. So all those stamps have thin cuts. It's a great set. 
I decided to stamp them onto the pattern paper with charcoal ink and then just fussy cut them out. There is coordinating thin cuts and you could totally do that, but I didn't want the border. I wanted these to go like just the pattern to end right at the line. And I thought that way they match perfectly. I don't need to do any kind of coloring. It makes it a lot faster. So I didn't even like shade them with ink. I thought about that and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave them plain, just stamped onto pattern paper, fussy cut them out. They're actually pretty easy to cut. Uh, but if I was going to stamp them to color them, I'd definitely use the dies. I've also gone ahead and cut some of those sprigs and leaves from rosemary cardstock and you can see I added that into the cluster and there's the rest of my flowers I have a bunch more leaves okay this little skunk isn't that perfect for this page that is the May stamp of the month so you can't get that anymore there's a new stamp of the month every month and that is the one from back in May and it's just perfect my daughter's also planning to dress like a skunk for Halloween so I'm probably going to get even more use out of that stamp set I thought when I got it I don't know how much I'm going to use this turns out I'm going to use it a lot. I am using quite a mix on this layout or on these layouts. Some things are retired, some things are still available. Those flowers are from the September October special called Say It With Style. That is only available until the end of October while supplies last. So I will put everything I use down in the description box and I will mark the things that are no longer available right now as I'm posting the video uh, as retired. I'll put that description beside them so just in case you do have some of these in your stash or maybe you're buying used sets or something like that uh, then you can see what I was using I'm trying this little kind of like sideways flower it's like half of a flower in there but I just don't like it I want it to be bigger I'm trying to have a little bit of each of the three colors I have the lighter pink the darker like coral color and then the yellow in each of the clusters you can see in the smaller cluster the yellow is actually not in a flower it's in the little word strip both of those word strips are stickers from the sticker sheet and then the title is also from the sticker sheet now I know I'm gonna have a bit of a story to write so I'm bringing in this setting the scene there's some really nice journaling lines in here I like that these are kind of like a stitched look and the ends are uneven so I figured if I stamp this a couple times I should have enough room to write everything I want to say about this I'm just gonna test it out on a scrap piece of paper and then uh, stamp it with charcoal ink and uh, this set is actually not available it came out this summer but it is gone already uh, I have to mask off the bottom I didn't have enough room to stamp it twice completely so I'm just gonna put a post-it note down there and then I can Sorry, my head got in the way. Just trying to see exactly where I'm going and make sure it's straight. And then I can just stamp the majority of that. And I think hopefully that will be enough room. I'm grabbing melon ink. You can see it has the big R on there. I mark all my retired ink colors so that I remember which ones are retired. This was color of the year last year. And I'm using this tiny little splatter stamp. This is from the Perfectly Imperfect Patterns also retired but you probably have some sort of splatter stamp um, in your collection somewhere I know I have many I like this one because it's just so little and I didn't want anything too big or overpowering and I'm just stamping it multiple times so I'm stamping it first generation so the darkest amount of ink right next to the paper and then as I go outwards I just keep stamping it kind of rotating it different directions and that way the splatters just kind of fade off and on camera, you can't even see all of them in person. You can see it a little bit more how as the ink fades out, the splatters fade out. And I like how this adds just a little bit of interest, a little bit of texture, but it's not overpowering or like really drawing your eye there. Now, if you don't like doing like stark white backgrounds, you could also do something like this on colored cardstock and just make sure that the colors of ink that you're grabbing are darker than the cardstock color in the background. But I love white, I love the crispness of it, and the blank slate that I know I can add whatever ink colors I want, whatever stamping I want, and uh, it's hard to believe actually that I used to not stamp very much on my layouts. Now I stamp on, I think, almost every single layout. All right, I finished this off camera, stuck everything down, and then I added some gold glitter gems. I love the way these sparkle and just added them to each of my embellishment clusters, just in groups of one or two 
or three and just kind of scatter them around. Here we go right into the second layout again, starting on white cardstock. Um, you're gonna see some repeating themes here. Now I've gone ahead and ripped my strips. This point I wasn't even really measuring. I was just kind of guesstimating and also working with chunks of paper that I had left over from working on other projects and just seeing if I could reuse the pieces that were already left over in the bag. I keep all of my collections in the bag that they come in. I love that the bags are like Ziploc tops, right? They're like zip top bags because then it's so easy to pull your stuff in and out. And usually I store any coordinating embellishments, sticker sheet, all that stuff together. I don't store cardstock usually in there, but um, I have like my cardstock tower right beside me with the close to my heart paper organizers. And so that I can just reach over and grab what other, whatever color of cardstock I need. I have just kind of laid my paper there. I did put little pen marks so I knew where my paper needed to go back to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do some ink blending. Now this peach color is quite light and blending brushes usually make your colors like pretty light to apply as well. So it's gonna take me a bit to build up the color to the depth that I want. I could have gone ahead and used melon for this. I could have built up my color a lot faster but I like how easily the peach blends out to white because I wanted it to just fade off and kind of just like blend right into the white. So that's why I stuck with the peach. So even though it takes more time to build up, I like the finished look. Now this story here is all about my friend. You can see her in the picture and my daughter and we went out for ice cream. It had been my friend's birthday and she was sick around her birthday and we just hadn't been able to get together. So we made a date, went out for ice cream, walked around, and just spent a couple of hours together. And it was just a fun time to catch up. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to do that. Just hang out, catch up with each other, and eat some ice cream. Isabella thought it was fantastic. <laughs> she still talks about going for ice cream. So she really enjoyed it, too. And... That's just like such a good summer story, right? Like, don't you just think when you think of ice cream, it just makes you think of beautiful, warm summer days. And I knew I wanted to document this story somewhere. I only had one picture from this day. That was the only picture we took. I do find when I'm out with friends, I often forget to take more pictures or I'll remember for a split second and then it's gone and I forget to get any more. So at least I grabbed one picture I now can tell this story. I'm repeating the exact same thing with that little splatter stamp. Now this is quite a big area. I definitely could have grabbed a larger splatter stamp, but hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I just like, this is the stamp I had out. It was on a block. Let's go for it. Now the funny thing about that stamp is while I was cleaning up after I was done making, I managed to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> I literally had it in my hand with other things that I was throwing out and just chucked it. Now I have a huge garbage can. Like it's one of those big, like, I don't know, it takes like extra large bags because I hate having to empty my trash. So I had to go digging through there. And you know what? I found it. I couldn't believe it. This tiny little stamp is probably like one inch. I actually found it, which made me very happy. All right. I'm using another retired stamp set. This one is like pretty old it's called a balanced diet and I don't know that I've used it that much I think maybe like once or twice but this is why I hate purging stamps because sooner or later I have the perfect layout that I need that stamp set for and then I'm so glad when I actually have it so I stamped the sentiment in there as my title I used melon ink and then I went ahead and stamped out the ice cream cone and uh, hand cut it. The cone is stamped with toffee ink and then I use this uh, Dream Maker stamp set. See that like water color splotch? That's what I use to fill in the scoops because there actually isn't like a fill in stamp for those ones and I think it worked out perfectly especially since the cone, the layer for the cone is not perfect either. I used ballerina which is the pink, nectarine for the orange and honey butter for the yellow. And then the little cherry, there is a layer for the cherry. 
in the stamp set as well as an outline and I used melon for that one. So same as the previous layout, I'm just gonna put everything in place where I want it and then I'm gonna stick it all together off camera because you guys don't need to like sit around and watch me stick everything down. This way you get an idea of where everything's gonna go. For the leaves on here, I use that same sprigs and leaves die, but I cut it from sage cardstock this time. I love both of those colors, sage and rosemary, and actually they work really good together. So if you wanna mix them and have two different tones of greenery, that works really good too. And then I decided my other embellishment on this page was gonna be butterflies. So you can see I have honey butter, peach and nectarine cardstock and I cut them out using the layered butterflies thin cut. I love those butterfly dies and I'm just kind of curling the wings a little bit and kind of popping them up give them a little bit of dimension and then they'll just get glued down into place. So everything is attached now. I went ahead and added more gold glitter gems just kind of scattered them around and I also used a pencil and my tea ruler to add journaling lines down at the bottom. I think I'll have a fair bit amount of journaling there and that way I can just keep drawing lines if I need to. I debated about adding a strip at the bottom, but I decided I just will leave it open, keep it simple, because my goal with these pages was just to do something fast and this paper pack was so much fun to play with. And the colors just went with so many different things. I think I still have more little summer stories that would work perfectly and I have a few chunks of paper left. So there might be some more layouts coming with it too. On this next page, I really wanted to work in this set. It's called Flowers Are Like Friends. And this came out during the summer as well. And I loved it. I love the way the flowers are drawn and I just didn't have time to use it this summer. So I'm like, I am getting it on some kind of project. So it's a really good size. Uh, you could definitely use it on cards. It would fill in like a good chunk of your cards. You can see I've drawn a line there along the bottom. It's about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And I am just putting my little foam pad that comes in the stamp sets underneath to help me get a really good impression. Inking my stamp up with charcoal ink and then just going right along you see my head poking in there because I'm trying to get over top and make sure I'm not overlapping them too much and that I'm gonna get a really nice continuous pattern and I think this stamp was designed really well because it's pretty easy to continue the design and create this really pretty floral border. I have seriously debated coloring in these flowers because I think they'd be so much fun to color especially with like pencils or something like that they're quite delicate designs, so I think pencils would be the easiest because you can sharpen your pencils to a really small tip. And uh, you can see I'm bringing in some more paper here that is also ripped, and I'm just gonna layer those together and stick them at the bottom. Just covering up that bottom part of my page and the flowers will kind of peek out from behind it. But I wanted to make these pages fast, so I held off on coloring them. I have color going on throughout this page. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna leave them plain for now. And the nice thing is if I want to, if I'm looking at it later and I decide, oh, they really do need some color, I can always go in with pencils later and color up the parts that are showing. If you guys have made it this far in the video, I hope you'll give me a like. It helps out my video and pushes it out to the algorithm. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. So my strips of paper here are going flush right to the bottom and I'm just sticking those down and then I wanted to put some up at the top. So I'm repeating that rainbow kind of ombre pattern. It is my favorite out of the entire pack. The rainbow stripe, which is on the back side of that and the ombre rainbow, I love both of those. Any kind of paper that has like a rainbow stripe, any sort of rainbow color pattern, I love it. And so I'm working in as much of it as I possibly can on this page. There's also this really cute house paper. And this isn't really about house, but it happens in our neighborhood, in our town. So this was just one evening. We'd gone over to the park after supper. We were really making an effort this summer to get outside as much as possible, right? We live in Canada. We got really cold winters, so you really maximize your time in the summer. And so I just wanted to document 
not necessarily this exact night. There was nothing that was really like crazy that happened. But just the fact that this summer we tried to get out after supper time, go for a walk, go to the park, just get outside, do something all together on most nights and just some really fun memories. Now, I was thinking about journaling right on the white, like on my base, but I decided to make myself a little journaling card. This is the You Go Girl set. This is also from that Say It With Style special and I love a lot of these stamps in this particular set. Uh, I love them for titles. So I really like this one that you are all kinds of amazing. And then there's also one that just says awesome. So I was debating between the two of them. The awesome one actually fit better in here. But these do have coordinating dies, which is awesome. I love that they all have dies. So I thought I could always cut out the other one and just kind of have it overhang the top of the card but I am gonna end up going with that awesome one and then using those same journaling lines that I used earlier just makes it so much faster rather than having to like hand draw them. I am doing this on white daisy cardstock and I'm gonna bring in charcoal ink for the journaling lines and I thought I would do the lines first so I kind of get them where I want them and then I can figure out where exactly I want the word awesome to go and then I thought, what if I add some color in there? So I grabbed my peach ink and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna blend it so it's dark in the middle, blend it out so it's softer. And then I am gonna stamp my title with sapphire ink. So my photos are matted with a really thin, like 1 8 inch thin mat of white and then sapphire, cause there's sapphire in that pattern paper that has like the little trees and houses on it. So that's where the blue is coming into play there. I went ahead and stuck everything down. I added the same ink blending and splatter stamps that I did on my other ones on those two little cluster points there, more glitter gems. And I love how this layout came together. These are super simple pages, but they're beautiful. And once I get the story on there, I think they're gonna be a great addition to the scrapbooking that I did this summer. I hope you got some good inspiration for telling your own stories from this summer. Check out this playlist and watch some more process videos while you're here, and I'll see you next time. Bye.